This email contains a value that was calculated out of a Microsoft Fabric notebook, and it was sent to me via a Microsoft Fabric data pipeline. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can extract data out of a Microsoft Fabric notebook and send it to yourself via email or Teams via a pipeline. Now, why might you want to do this? Well, I started looking into how to do this because I was facing a bit of a problem. And that problem was that I was trying to run some automated data validations against my Power BI report semantic models. And I was using a Microsoft Fabric notebook to do those validations. And I was able to schedule the notebook. But after I had scheduled the notebook, I quickly realized that after the notebook ran all of its calculations, I didn't have a way to get the results of those calculations out to the people that I would want to see them. So be it my team or some key stakeholders. The way that I would have to output those results was via email or Teams. Enter the Microsoft Fabric Data Pipeline, which can orchestrate not only running the notebook, but also sending an email. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build your own pipeline in pretty much the simplest example that you're going to find on the internet. But before we get there, if you are interested in business intelligence, in particular Fabric, maybe a little sprinkle of Databricks and you know, occasionally random things that catch my eye, please consider subscribing and liking this video. It really helps the channel grow. Okay, let's go ahead and let's jump into our demo where I show you how I was able to build out this email. And I'm also gonna show you a few emails along the way uh, that you know maybe don't look quite right. Okay, so here I am in my dev Microsoft Fabric workspace. And just a side note, I'm gonna be showing you notebooks and pipelines that I've already created in this video. But all I had to do to create them was click this little new button right over here. And for a notebook, just search for the notebook. And then for a pipeline, just search pipeline over here and click it. Okay, but first we're gonna be looking at the notebook and I have this simple demo notebook right here. Let's take a quick look at what it does. It loads in some sample data and then it cr uh, creates like an average. And I display that average and you can see that here, average score. 81.3333333 repeating. Now, here's where the secret sauce is. I want to output that value, so that 8.1333, let's say that was maybe a checksum, into an email. So what I did was I used this MS Spark utils.notebook.exit to return that value. So every single time this notebook runs, it's gonna calculate that 81, and then it's going to output it as an exit value. Now, what this is gonna do is every single time that this notebook runs, it's gonna calculate that value, and then it's gonna output it uh, to whatever is running the notebook as part of its success message. Now, just so you're aware, this is probably not, in fact, I know this is not the most efficient way to output data in mass. That would be writing to a data warehouse or a data lake house and then consuming it out of there via data pipeline to email. So let me know down below in the video comments if you wanna see a video on that. But what it is perfect for is this use case that I'm trying to solve right here, which is, hey, I wanna run some checks and then output a check value to uh, an email. So that's why I'm using this here, and that's really where functionality like this exit value becomes really useful and quick. But that to say, once I have this notebook outputting an exit value, what I can then go ahead and do is I can run it via a data pipeline. Now I'm going to show you how you can uh, create a run notebook data pipeline activity in your new starter pipeline. So let's pretend that there weren't any activities here. What you could do over here is click into this activities tab, then click notebook right here. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to create a new notebook step. Now you can give this any kind of name and you can fiddle with some advanced settings over here. But in order to select the actual notebook that you want it to run, you first select the workspace and then you select the notebook. If the notebook takes parameters, you can also set those parameters right here. Now, I already have configured this. So as you can see right here, I have a notebook step in this pipeline. And what I did was 
on success, so that's that this little green check mark, I say, hey, I want to send an email. Now, let's go ahead and let's add a second email activity to this exact same pipeline. So I'm gonna do that by going over here to activities and then clicking this email uh, activity right here. Now, in order to run it on success, I basically go over here to this little green and I just drag it over here to this Office 365 uh, email icon. Now, once I select this output, one of the things I can then go ahead and do is I can go into settings. Now, what I needed to do was I needed to sign in with my existing account, and then I needed to give a recipient. So in this case, I'm going to send the email to myself, and then I can set a subject line dynamically, and whoops, I had a space there, so no spaces. Um, but I'm not gonna do that, so I could create a dynamic subject line, and I'm just gonna title this demo. Now, when I click into this main body right here, um, I can click over here onto this little lightning bolt to add in dynamic content. Now you might be like, oh, well, great. I just wanna get my notebooks output. So I'm gonna output this notebook by just clicking this activity right here and then going ahead and clicking send. But what that's gonna go ahead and do is that's gonna send you this giant block of data right here with a ton of other stuff. And really what we want to access is this exit value piece right here. So let's go ahead and let's try to fix that. So we're going to go over here and we're gonna go in to view expression builder. And that's gonna show us this activity.notebook.output piece right here. And let's go ahead and let's edit this a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to the end of this output section and I'm going to go result dot exit value. Now you might be like, well, great problem solved. I'm going to be able to get my exit value out of the email. However, you got to keep in mind that this is JSON. And so what that means is that your email is going to look like this right over here. So see this average score and then see how it's still in parentheses and we just want this numeric value. So how are we gonna go ahead and fix this? Well, we're gonna go back over here to our output statement. We're still going to go dot result dot exit exit value and then we are going to wrap this whole thing right over here in a json right and wrap this at the end and then we're going to go dot average score and we're going to go ahead and click ok and just like that when we run this we're going to get an email that contains a value like i showed you at the start of this video so let's go ahead and let's pull up what this final email looks like right here. So with all that said and done, I hope that you learned something in this video. And if you did, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. And if you want to see videos on any other topics, in particular about Fabric or Power BI, let me know down below in the video comments. Thanks for watching.